After several weeks, I found myself on a familiar road heading north. The dust beneath my tires, the search for a campsite for the night, and the sound of nature all bringing back a piece of me that I've missed. I realized on this drive that I had lost some of my confidence. It's hard to explain or even comprehend why, but it did. I felt nervous driving down a dirt road leading to somewhere unknown. I wanted to turn around when I came up on a cow gate, and every sound was strange to me. I haven't felt this way in so long, but I took a deep breath and I went anyway. You guys happy to be done driving? We've been driving all day. I am so glad to be here. I've been driving since probably 7.30 this morning. It's now 7.47, lost an hour. So about 11 to 12 hours of driving and I'm here in Utah and I'm so happy to be here. I actually pinned a GPS location to stay at tonight that's about six miles away, but as I was driving off the freeway to get there, I saw this access road for National Forest Land and I decided to go past the cow gate and I found this spot and look at that sunset. The sun is blood red because I think there's fires. This, there's so much smoke here, but oh my gosh, you guys, it was 109 degrees most of the drive today and it is probably 81 one right now and dropping and I cannot wait to put on a sweatshirt get inside eat my dinner and just relax and get acclimated to my new temporary setup it's a little wonky right now I almost don't want to show you because it <laughs> it's gonna need some work <laughs> I didn't have enough time to build the platform the way that I wanted to so I have it right now where it's kind of like just logging blocks or whatever <laughs> We may end up falling in the middle of the night. We'll see. But we are so high. I'm going to have to help the dogs up. I don't even know how I'm going to get up. I'm so out of practice with living in a forerunner, you guys. So I'm sure this is night one and we're going to have to reacclimate. But I'm going to stop yammering because we're all hungry, thirsty, and tired. So let's get settled. Well, as you can see, it doesn't quite fit very well with the dog beds, but I think once the dogs are inside, it's going to be fine. But it's just, it's such a perfect night right now. The temperature is just absolutely wonderful. There's not a lot of bugs. I can hear the I-15 a little bit, but it's really not that bad. And honestly, I'll just tune it out once I lay inside. But I have my burrito, I've got my LaCroix, I've got my tablet, and I've got, most importantly, my boys. And I'm really looking forward to night one back in the Forerunner. <laughs> Well, this is why I wanted to lower the platform, so that's probably what we're gonna do next, huh? It's a little high in here, huh? I love you. Though. Oh, are you jealous? You want your toy? All right, go lay down. Okay. Gosh, I've missed being on the road and the simplicity of having the Forerunner, even though it's a little complicated setting up tonight, there's something special about my time that I've had in Chalupa. You know, and I don't know if it's because when I started in the Forerunner, I had my three dogs and there's some sentiment there, but the blessings with friends, places, experiences that I've had in the Forerunner, it's just, it's kind of nostalgic. I'm just, I'm just thankful to be back on the road. You know, I spent several weeks, almost a month off the road, taking care of myself. Three of those weeks I had that migraine that wouldn't go away and it was just proof that I was just over it. I needed a break. It feels right to be here right now.
About five years ago, I started planning what my version of road life would look like. Ever since I took my first road trip out west with Pike, I fell in love with the freedom of being on the open road. In 2021, I sold my house, most of my things, and I moved into a truck camper with my three dogs. Before this, I had spent every minute of my vacation time driving to Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, Washington, and Colorado to explore, hike, backpack, and be where I wanted to be. In my opinion, I have a great personality for this lifestyle. I tend to remain level-headed in chaos, I'm patient when things go wrong, and I thoroughly enjoy living this way. However, this lifestyle isn't always rainbows and butterflies. It can be extremely challenging. I've been broken down, stranded, left without a clear path multiple times. I've broken leaf springs, had to buy a new truck, I've been stuck, and I've broke more things than I can keep track of. Additionally, I've had to say goodbye to my dog and my camper has been totaled in the wind. Regardless of the multiple challenges, I still long to live this way. I still want to see so many places. While road life might look a little different for me now, I'm still actively seeking ways to continue on. I think it was easier when I first started because I had a well-paying, fully remote job that allowed me to travel. But last year I left that job and was forced to enter into the seasonal work world. And that line of work is a little bit harder to be mobile, but it's allowed me to stay in one place for longer periods of time which is something I've been wanting to do. So regardless of the challenges, I still feel at peace when coming up to a campsite, making dinner, and being on public land. One of my favorite parts of road life is the sunrise and the sunsets and we had a pretty awesome sunrise this morning I'm not gonna lie night one is always rough I think for me it's a little extra rough because I never wanted to go back inside the forerunner I was ready to be done with that except for like short-term things but you know I'm trying to have a perspective that it's all okay. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be right now. And it feels good to be back out on the road, making coffee with this beautiful sunrise with my awesome dogs and heading nowhere fast. Although I am kind of heading somewhere fast, but we'll get into that in a later video. I don't want to give too much away, but I do have something pretty cool in the works right now. And there's a reason I'm heading north. Hopefully it'll all come around full circle. But right now, I'm just gonna enjoy this morning. It's peaceful. We have a long drive today. I'm hoping to get to Montana today. I'm almost to Salt Lake City. So I think it's gonna be a good day. Lots of fires. Hopefully they don't impact the route too much. As you can see, I'm still figuring things out. <laughs> Where does this belong? Where does this belong? Where can I put this? But give me a couple of nights and I'll be back at it. So even though I'm back on, in the, on the road in the Forerunner again, I think it's still going to be a, a really awesome experience. You know, I loved road life in the Forerunner. I put over almost 80,000 miles inside the Forerunner. So I'm not disappointed by any means. I definitely am excited. I just, I'm ready to, you know, embark on that next chapter. And I think patience is one of the things that I struggle with the most. And I just really want to be patient right now. I don't want to rush. I don't want to make a hasty decision. I, I, I want to find the right camper. And you guys have been sending me a lot of suggestions in the comments and that's so awesome. Thank you, keep it coming. Unfortunately, my budget's about <laughs> way less than what those, those rigs are. Um, even the scamps are out of my budget, like the ones from the 80s. So <sighs> it's been a little bit of a challenge, but you know, I, I believe that it'll all come together the way it's supposed to and the right rig will present itself. So two nights ago, my dad sent me a little vintage camper that was super cute and unique. Like I haven't really seen this style of them very often. And it was in my budget and it was in town and I was just like, oh, I'm leaving first thing in the morning. Like that sucks. You know, I'm pretty hopeful that the right camper is gonna come around. But until then, my whole goal is to just be content in the moment 
And by content, I mean ready to move, but also okay where I'm at. And I think that's gonna help me a lot as I transition through this next chapter. Uh, one thing I want to do is be mindful of my thoughts and take captive of any negative thoughts or unhelpful thoughts that don't go towards the goal or towards being a better person. And I wanna give those to the Lord and submit them and just take captive of them. And I, I think that that's really gonna help me become more content in the moment, but yeah. It's definitely a struggle, but I feel really good this morning because like I actually slept really good and the dogs were comfortable. We weren't hot. It was like high forties last night, which was perfect sleeping weather. How's my boys doing this morning? Are we happy babies? You guys are being so good. I love you. Yes. Oh, you want some belly rubs, some belly rubs. Okay. Good boy, honey. Hey, Mom. Hey, honey. I've been worried about you. I'm sorry. I've been packing and getting ready and making coffee and having a great morning with the beautiful sunrise. Oh, good. And you had a good night's sleep? We slept really well. Good. Okay. I just, when I saw you had been there for 12 hours, I was like, that's a long time. Oh, she I was in no hurry to leave. I'm, I'm taking my time. Good job, honey. I'm so happy. Okay, I, but you know what was weird was I had all these visions like, you know, somebody killed you or you're just stuck there. Well, take those but, take take those thoughts captive and give them to the Lord. I did. I was praying really hard that everything be okay, but I had to call you. So oh, I'm sorry I made you worry, Mom. I should have texted you back sooner. No, that's okay, honey. You did, you're packing and you're getting ready and you're not in any hurry. And oh. I'm, I'm glad you got a, a good rest and a good time you know away so you keep having fun okay all right i love you mom love you too all bye. right bye like i said take every thought captive and give it to the lord <laughs> I love my mom. It's so nice having family and friends who care about me, who look out for me and, and uh, check in on me. I think that's one of the most important things for me being a solo female is that I have a community that's keeping an eye out. So thanks, mom. That was some surreal timing right there. <laughs> I hate that my mom worries, but you know, she, I'm definitely, I'm definitely loved and that is a beautiful thing. But I just made my coffee. I added my creamer, talked to my mama packed up the car. I'm just going to clean up my coffee filter and I think load up and get on the road. 